an atmosphere, atmosphere here. It's, I don't think I've ever experienced anything like it. I, I said to somebody this morning, I attended the event last night, and uh, looking at everybody this morning, it's like a family, a very big family, coming together after not seeing each other for quite a period of time. But you all know each other. You know, it's extraordinary uh, to see the, the well wishes, the, 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 the smiling, the, the, uh, the willingness, the enthusiasm just to get on and do something really substantial here over the coming days. So it's an amazing uh, for me to see that, that passion and energy and to enthusiasm coming out, out from all of you. Can I just, uh, before I make a few comments, just acknowledge the Deputy Minister of Social Development, the Honourable Henrietta Bogapani Zulu. Um, I've met the Deputy Minister on a number of occasions, and you have a very good minister acting on your behalf in government. She brings a passion and energy to her job, which I think is very welcome, and I think will be very good and help you to deliver on the types of um, types of areas that you want to build on over the coming uh, years. So, welcome, Minister. Good, good to meet with you again. And again, can I just, rather than go down through the list of everybody, just say all protocols observed, just to save a, a, a bit of time. But I just want to welcome also the, the young people, the beloved young people. Um, the performance that you gave this morning, again, shows the passion and energy that exists among the young people of South Africa. And this is a passion and energy that you have to tap into to make sure that whatever you come out of this conference with involves the young people, listens to the young people, and takes on board uh, what they have to say. Thanks again to the National Association of Child and Youth Care Workers and UNICEF South Africa for inviting me. And thank you to the Department of Social Development for hosting this really important conference together with the NACCW. It is a great honor and privilege for me to be here with you at the opening of this 18th conference on child and youth care in South Africa. I know how hard you must have worked. I can see it from walking in last night and walking in this morning, the, the, the effort that goes in to organizing an event like this with 1,400 people. So congratulations for bringing everybody together, and not just from South Africa, but from international shores as well. Well done on that. My role in the Government of Ireland has been focused on this continent since 2007, when I came to Malawi to open our embassy there. I actually travelled with my wife. I remember travelling on the plane into Lilongwe traveling direct from Beijing. And my wife saying to me, you know, where have you brought me to? You know? And it was extraordinary that over the four years, subsequent years, she will now say that was the favorite part of her life, those four years in Malawi, working there. And we have a grown up family now, but we also have an adopted child from Malawi. We love the place so much, so it's very much in our hearts. And this Southern African region, and all of Africa is very much uh, in our hearts. Over this time, I have developed a strong understanding of the opportunities and challenge this continent presents for its children. The challenges are certainly stark, unacceptable levels of poverty, inequality, discrimination in terms of race, disability and migration, low learning outcomes and violence. These challenges may sometimes seem insurmountable, but they're not. The solutions outnumber those challenges by far. A vast and resourceful continent, a bright and energetic youth, an immeasurable positive energy and commitment. Tapping into these opportunities to carve a better life for the children of South Africa and the African continent is what this conference is all about. The Irish government believes wholeheartedly that setting out to help the furthest behind first is the most effective way to address inequality and achieve all of the Sustainable Development Goals. And the Sustainable Development Goals framework itself is underpinned by a similar underlying principle, leave no one behind. We are here today to explore how we can help those children in South Africa and the broader continent 
who have unfortunately been left behind in terms of care, nutrition, safety, education, in terms of a future. And you hear some of the stories, the fantastic stories of young people and the way they have dealt with these, these, these challenges and rose to make productive lives for themselves, contributing to society. And these are fantastic stories that I think we have to learn from. I have worked alongside UNICEF throughout my career. Amongst their many strengths is their ability to identify and forge partnerships with, with, with agents of change. In South Africa, UNICEF works with the Department of Social Development and the National Association of Child Care Workers, amongst others, to assist the millions of children in South Africa who are not receiving the care and support they need. Amongst the results of this partnership, the Isabindi program stands out. Isabindi is an excellent model of parenting support for vulnerable children. It has yielded many important results, including reduced violence for children, better learning outcomes, reduced substance abuse, and employment for women and youth. I'm firmly of the view that the most strategic role development partners like Ireland can play is to identify locally born solutions. That's really, really important that the solutions come from within, that work and then leverage those solutions and the financing required to take them to scale. I want to congratulate the child and youth care workforce on your critical role overall and in making Isabindi and other initiatives worthy of investment and scale up in South Africa and in indeed in Africa as a whole. Let's hope that we get sufficient investment to make Isabindi and similar type programs available to all the children that so badly need this help. It was just said that I'm, I've been here five years, so that's a long term for a diplomat on a, a foreign posting, so I'm due to leave um, next month after five wonderful years in, in this region. So I'll be returning to my family in our, to our home in Dublin, but I really do so knowing that the commitment and the will as witnessed by the energy that I can feel at this conference this morning cannot fail. And finally, can I just say, you know, listen to the young people. Listen to the messages that they have. Their messages are really, really important. I mean, you heard the young people speaking last night about the value of technology in their lives, what they've done with technology. These are important initiatives that can be of huge value to the fight that you are, that you are trying to uh, deal with. And I, I'm sure all of you have also been following the the climate change issue globally and the way in which the young people have come together across the world delivering messages to the older people and to governments about making sure that we leave a planet for them. These are the types of messages that we need to listen to. Young people have a message, have something substantial to say and we should be listening to it. So if I'm to leave anything with you today is to listen to the young people and what they have to say. So thank you very much for the opportunity to come and witness and be part of this big family for this important occasion. I've thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, I wish you every success for the uh, coming days. Thank you very much.